Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimize maximum of array. This is a pretty tricky problem, especially for a medium. If you couldn't solve it, definitely don't get discouraged. We're given a zero indexed array where every uh, integer is going to be non-negative. So basically zero or greater than zero. The way they describe this problem is that there are like a few operations that we can do. I'll go through these, but then I'll kind of explain a better way to think about this problem, like a more simple way. So I'll just use the same example that they do in this problem. What we can do is choose any integer except the leftmost one, and you'll see why in just a second. So among any of these integers, we are going to pick one of them. Suppose it's this guy. We're going to decrement it by one minus one. So this is now going to be six. And we take that one that we decremented and actually move it over to the left over here. So this is going to be plus one now four. Now, since we can't decrement this, the reason we can't decrement this is because where would the value go? If we say this is two, now that one is kind of lost. That's not something we're allowed to do. And given these operations, we just want to return the minimum possible value of the maximum integer of nums after performing any number of operations. So that's the simple part. We can perform this operation anytime we want, like an infinite number of times if we want. This part, you'll probably have to read a few times to understand what exactly it's saying. Basically, in this array, we're always going to return the maximum value. In this case, it's seven. But what we're trying to do is minimize that maximum value. So one way to do it would be to do exactly what we did, make this a six and make this a four. Now the maximum is six. Well, it's in two spots, but it's still six. So that's what we would return. But we can actually do better. You can see in the output, over here, the result is actually five. How exactly would we get to that point? Well, you kind of have to prioritize by taking the maximums and decreasing them, as you would guess. By decreasing this, we're not going to get anywhere. So for this guy, let's decrement it one more time. Let's now say it's going to be a five. I'll write it down over here. And this guy is now going to be a five. We took two from here and moved it to the left. Now our maximum is still six, but we can make this a five and make this a two. At this point, we can't really do anything. We could definitely get this smaller and we could probably get this smaller, but this is going to be our bottleneck. It's basically going to keep growing or the best we can do is just leave it as it is. So in this case, we return five. Now, based on that kind of quick walkthrough, you might think that we could go with like a max heap approach where we just take from this entire array and get the maximum value so that we can decrement it and try to lower the overall maximum. If you try doing it this way, you'll see it's pretty tricky. And even if we could get it to work, the overall time complexity would be higher than the solution I'm about to show you. And using a max heap, how would we even know that we're done? That's kind of the complicated part. So there is a better way to do this, and it has to do with kind of, again, simplifying this problem. First of all, let's make an observation. We know that the result can't possibly be smaller than the initial value in this spot because this value is never going to get any smaller. It's possible that everything over here is smaller than this, but we're returning the maximum, remember? So that's something to keep in mind. This is initially going to be our result. And now just going down this track of thinking, let's see if we can arrive to a solution just by iterating through the array. The reason we're going to start from left to right, one is because that's what we usually do, but also because we're kind of thinking of it in terms of sub problems. What is the result of this subarray? What's the minimized maximum of this subarray? And then we can expand that. What's the result of this subarray? and kind of keep expanding that just by adding a single value. We couldn't do that the other way because when we take a value, we're only allowed to move values to the left. So just like we know that this subarray can't get any smaller, the three can't get any smaller. As a result, our result will never be smaller than three. We can use that same idea as we slowly expand this array. Like at this point, when we just have two values here, and what we're going to do, of course, is turn this guy into a five and turn this guy into a five. Once we get to this point, we know that the result can't possibly be smaller than five. 
So that's the idea behind this problem. It's definitely not easy to come up with. If I was your interviewer, I would definitely give you a hint. So now let's run through the algorithm. We start at three and then we go to the next value seven. What should we be doing here? Well, our goal is to evenly distribute the values. Like if this is a three and this is a seven, we want to evenly distribute the values. How exactly can we do that? Well, probably by taking the sum of the array and dividing it by the length of the subarray, which is two in this case. So in that case, we would get 10 divided by two, which is five. We'd probably wanna round up. So in the case where we had something like 11 divided by two, we'd get 5.5, but we'd probably wanna round that up to six because remember, we're trying to return the maximum. So that's another observation to make. Then what do we do with that value five? Well, we know that that's kind of the average of this subarray, but in other words, we know that this is going to be the maximum value. So we would take this value and then assign it to the result, but only if this value is actually greater than the result, because notice the opposite case here. What if these values were in the opposite order? What if this was a seven and this was a three? Then our initial result would have been seven by the time we're only at this part. But then when we add this second value, we have a sum of 10, we divide that by two. Now we get five. Should we take the five and assign it to our result? No, because if we previously saw a seven, we're never going to decrease the result. So in other words, we're always going to say result is equal to the maximum of itself and whatever this value is that we computed, which in this case is five. The reason is because as we mentioned earlier, we can move values to the left, but we can't move values to the right. So now let's just kind of walk through the rest of this problem. Remember we calculated a five, so that's what we're gonna now reassign our result to, and we don't really need to actually update the array. So I'm not really gonna do that, but I guess I will just to kind of show you what it would look like but we don't really need to do that. We just need to keep track of what our result is. And also as we are adding new values, like now we're gonna visit this one. So this is our subarray at this point. Remember what we're doing is taking the sum of that subarray, which now is gonna be 11 and dividing it by the length, which is three. So this computation is pretty easy. It's gonna be less than five. So we don't need to update our result in this case. But another important observation is if we're keeping track of the total, we probably don't wanna to have to recompute that every time. So the easiest thing to do is just have like a variable to keep track of the total, which I'm not really showing, but it's pretty simple. So I won't do that. Now, lastly, we get to this six here. Our total sum is now gonna be 17, divide that by four, which is the length. And that's gonna be five after we round up. So our result is still not gonna change and five is going to be the result that we ultimately return. Clearly the time complexity of this is not bad. We're not using any advanced data structures. We're just iterating through the array, keeping track of the total and updating the result periodically. So the time complexity is big O of N, memory complexity is big O of one. Now let's code this up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize our result to the first value in the array at index zero. And I'm also going to, well, before I do that actually, since we're going to be iterating through every value in the input array, except of course the first value. So I'm gonna say for in range starting at index one and then going up until the length of the array. The reason we're skipping the first value is because we can't take values from the first value and move them to the left. So it doesn't really make sense to do anything with the first one. So what I'm also going to do is set our total, AKA our prefix sum also to the first value. So we're basically skipping the value at index zero and then starting at index one. Now, after we do that, it's pretty straightforward. Just as I kind of talked about, we're gonna keep track of our total by just adding the value at index I every single time and also updating our result, which is going to be the maximum of what it currently is, as well as the total. And we're gonna divide by the length, which is gonna be I plus one because arrays are zero indexed. Make sure not to forget that this operation, we wanna take the ceiling of it, so math, dot ceiling. We want to round up. That's what we're trying to do here. So among these two values, we want the maximum and we'll get that and we'll assign it to the result. Our result can never get any smaller. And then we're just going to go ahead and return this. I'll run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient, though this was a small amount of code. 
there's a lot of logic to it. And I think it would be a decent interview question if your interviewer is willing to help you out. I think it would make a good discussion trying to solve this problem. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.